humble lands, but mine are the best. We've been through it all, went to war when duty called. Never left a man behind, we move as one is super strong. I don't want followers, that implies I'm the leader. I'm not the captain, I just gave them something they can believe in. I hold the lamp in the darkness, but they're the light that I needed to see the road that we walk in between the angels and demons. And my fans have my back. Hate us if your feelings don't like facts. And my fans will fight back. Need you with the keyboard, you've been using to write back. I guess we need each other like both sides of the battery. We the army, we the homies, we the gang, we the cavalry. We're brothers and sisters, we hold it down like we gravity. Can't nobody break the bond that made us all family. Me and my fans, we don't care what anybody say. Middle fingers to whoever in the way, man. Me and my fans, we gon' be together till the grave. It's a gang till forever and a day, man. Me and my fans, we don't even trip in the hate. We the only Oklahoma weather can dish out some of the worst punishment in the world. Hi everyone, I'm meteorologist Aaron Tuttle. But now you can fight back by installing Class 4 impact resistant shingles from Ferguson Roof Systems. These shingles can withstand large hail, heavy rain, and hurricane force winds, all while keeping your home safe and dry. And the best part, this upgrade is completely free for many homeowners. So call today to start reaping the benefits these Class 4 shingles bring including a discount on home insurance, only at fergusonroofsystems.com. Hey everyone, meteorologist Aaron Tuttle back with you again. It is almost about a quarter till noon. This will be your live uh, weather update for your lunchtime on Tuesday. We're gonna see what changes may have occurred in the model data, kind of help uh, fine tune the forecast for your particular location. So thanks for joining. Make sure you like and share this video. Tell your friends and family about AT's weather. Even while you're watching it, just hit the share button on your timeline and that will kind of get the word out. Thanks again for subscribing, either on YouTube, Facebook fan subscriptions, Patreon, you name it. Appreciate all of your support. So with that said and done, let's get on with the action. Again, if you're having trouble getting notified live, make sure you hit this link to opt in on your Facebook Instant Messenger. Just post that in the chat section. Uh, so you can click on that at any point in time and just hit manage messages every now and then uh, to make sure you continue to get those notifications because I will send you those directly. Otherwise, YouTube and Twitter pretty much do a good job at notifying whenever I do go live. All right, so out there right now, <clears throat> <laughs> Can you tell a change in the air? <laughs> it's a little sticky out there. We've got humidity back. I'm like, what's that? In the wintertime, you, you hardly feel uh, humidity. But we have some clouds rolling in. Yes, temperatures are a little bit on the mild side. I'm at 60 degrees here in my Tempest weather station uh, with a southeast wind. So things are slowly changing. Now, we're going to be talking about winter precipitation. And, and before, since um, I was at Saturday, I think we started talking about this, the differentiation between snow, sleet, freezing rain, and rain. And it's important because it kind of depends on what you're going to get. In the wintertime forecasting, sometimes these events, you, you have to get a mixture of all three, and then you're trying to fine tune who gets all three, and then how much of each category do you get. It's a it's a nightmare. But bottom line is, if it was warm enough at all layers of the atmosphere, after where the, the rain develops really into the snow band, um, it all melts. All right, so it's no big deal. Well, we're not going to have that problem. What we're going to have is freezing rain for a while, and that is the snow that melts back into raindrops and then refreezes on contact on the surface. That's the ice accumulations uh, that you see on the trees and power lines. And then the sleet, uh, same idea, same process. It melts, and then, but it has a lot more time to refreeze. So those droplets then form little, what I call little ice balls, and they bounce around. Uh, they don't accumulate on power lines um, or surfaces, but um, you know they will accumulate on the ground level and cause travel problems as well. And then of course you have, there's no warm air at all in the atmosphere, and therefore it just falls as all snow. So that's a very short summary of kind of what we have from Oklahoma all the way on into Texas. Now, we do have the cold front coming on in. It's up here now to the central plain states, so it is moving. Last night around uh, our 9.30 update, I think it was, what, right about here, um, moving out of Canada. And temperature's up here to the not negative teens. So, yes, this is a cold mover, and this will be here by this evening and pressing southward into Texas also by tomorrow. Uh, late day. All right. So we, we obviously have a big change because these temperatures are about minus 40 to 50 degree difference. That's that's the abrupt change. So <laughs> it's definitely gotten cold up there. All right. So what we're going to watch for over time, this is a look at the ensemble runs, which show you the timeline, which basically tells you for Wednesday morning, we transition from this green to a, a red and pink, which is a transition from just regular raindrops like we showed you on that map to a little bit of sleet and freezing rain. 
and uh, that sleet algorithm uh, pop uh, percentage is quite high, and then and the freezing rain is quite low. So models are always having a trouble with that here in Oklahoma City because we should kind of go back and forth a little bit of each. Otherwise, you can see over time the blue, which represents snow, starts to go up, which means we will transition over to all snow by tomorrow evening here in the Oklahoma City metro area. And this is kind of the, the, the standard across the board, and I'll show you that on a flat two-dimensional view here in a minute. But if you were to average out some of the amounts that we have in the model data for snow, for example, a lot of them um, kind of congeal around four inches for Oklahoma City um, proper. Uh, freezing rain, just enough to kind of coat the surface, so it's not going to measure too much here. And then sleet accumulations, a tenth of an inch to two tenths of an inch. So a little bit of sleet mixed in. And again, it all depends on how quickly all that transfers over. Uh, the ICON model, by the way, for snow amounts has been pretty consistent for the last few runs. And it continues to show about four to maybe six inches of snow here in central Oklahoma. A little bit higher up the road toward Tulsa and then back out from, of course, from there. And of course, plenty of snow in Kansas and elsewhere and, and all that kind of stuff. So that was just a quick look at the um, German model that I occasionally like to look at for snow events. Um, okay, so here's a look at the upper levels of the atmosphere. So we're gonna move this into time. You, all that big energy we've talked about, it's still moving on through, so nothing has changed. Trough out there to the west is still coming in. It kind of curls off into a little bit of a, a low look to it by Thursday night as it kind of swings on through. A little piece left over here for uh, Friday, but most of the atmosphere will be dry by then. So at most case, we'll see some flurries uh, with this little last ditch hurrah, but most of our activity is going to be over on Thursday evening and a Thursday night. Okay, now the dry slot. I keep hearing comments about dry slot. Uh, there is no dry slot. I hate to break it to you. Anyone who says it's a dry slot <laughs> doesn't know what a dry slot is. Here's a look at the humidity value um, in the atmosphere, and we're pretty saturated. Yeah, there's teeny tiny pockets of some dry air that the models try to hint on, but that's that's not a dry slot. That's just some occasional little pockets of dry air that kind of floats around in an otherwise saturated environment. But there's Wednesday morning. Uh, there's midday, lunchtime, afternoon, evening. There's no dry slot for Wednesday. Now, as we head into Thursday, look at that. Now, this is a dry slot. This comes in here, and it punches through Texas and southeast Oklahoma with humidity values of 5%. Now, that, my friends, is a dry slot. But that's after the event's pretty much over for that area. And you do see, though, the wraparound, thanks to the upper level low, here across the OI-44 corridor, points north and west. And this is where our secondary round of snow moves through. So that's how we still get the snow here across the state for that secondary push, which helps to accumulate a few more inches before all is said and done. And a lot of dry air moves in over the region. So there's no threat of us missing on this winter storm, which, by the way, winter storm watch is in effect or might even be a warning at this point. I have to go back and look at the new data uh, from the Weather Service that just came out a little moment ago. All right, so let's take a look at, we'll do the European because it's going to cover the big view here from the central southern plains. Um, so for Tuesday evening, uh, again, that's this evening, we should have some light showers bubbling up here across central, northern, northeastern Oklahoma. Uh, as we head into overnight period, that cold air will continue to move its way southward into the state. So on the northern counties, by midnight already, we're going to see freezing rain and sleet take shape and then changing over into snow as you head into Kansas. By 3 o'clock in the morning, it's already making its way into the Oklahoma City metro area, especially the northwest side of town. And as we head into the drive time at 6 to 7 o'clock in the morning, as you get up, get the coffee, start to head out the door, we've got slippery road conditions already from Oklahoma City all up to Tulsa. But if you've been watching me, this is not new for you. You've known about this now for several days. And it's just going to be enough to cause a nightmare. It won't be enough to cause power out just enough to cause roadways to be um, deteriorating quite rapidly. Um, sheet, of, sheet of ice is not good to drive on, but that's going to extend from Oklahoma City up to Tulsa uh, and on to Missouri here in the red and some purple shading, snow up there in northwest Oklahoma. As we head into the midday Wednesday hours, you still see some light activity, but this isn't anything new. We talked about how you're going to get a light activity for Wednesday until we head into the uh, late afternoon and evening, then that's when the big lift comes in and that's when we're going to start to get the higher accumulations. So as we head into the three to four o'clock frame, it just blows up. I-44 corridor, you got the mixture of freezing rain, sleet, and then eventually turning into some snow north and west of that boundary. Now you will watch the uh, freezing rain expand down here to what, northwest Texas. This is by six o'clock this evening, all the way down to Ardmore. 
not quite yet into North Texas, but it's getting there. Otherwise, still more here in Oklahoma City and Tulsa. The models do try to change over the precipitation type, though, to all sleep by this point with some snow starting to mix in. So that's good. Anytime we can get a very short window of pure ice accumulations, we're going to take that. But it does unfortunately shove that window and a bigger window down here in the southeastern Oklahoma um, for the remainder of this event. So there's uh, 9 o'clock this evening, heavy rain in Dallas-Fort Worth on up to uh, North Texas, and then that cold air starts to work its way into the Dallas-Fort Metroplex by midnight. So they're going to be knocking on the door with their changeover to freezing rain by this point in time. Otherwise, we get to snow here in northeast Oklahoma back into central Oklahoma. So all that ice for us is long gone um, during the evening hours on Wednesday, and it gets shoved into southeast Oklahoma. And then that ice continues on down to Arkansas, Missouri, uh, from there, and then all the way down south to Dallas. and looks like down to Waco, back out toward the hill country. And as you head into Thursday morning, we start to wrap up with that first big wave here across, um, let's say the eastern half of Oklahoma starts to wind down a little bit. Still going down there in North Texas, though. And then we'll start to see that secondary push of the upper level energy come through, which will help to generate that secondary round of snow here across Oklahoma. Some lingering um, light freezing rain activity and sleet down there in North Texas. There's Thursday afternoon. All that kind of starts to wrap up. We still end up with a little bit of light snow here Thursday night into early Friday morning as the system finally departs. So that's the big picture. That's the timeline that covers everybody all at once. And so I kind of want to show you that just to kind of give you an idea on amounts, types, precipitation, etc. Now, how much will fall? First off, I'm just going to show you just the a few of the different models that we have, just kind of give you an idea how they vary just a little bit. For example, this is the European, which I actually like the European the most, and, and for the most part, uh, for snowfall totals. But it got it's got five or so inches of snow here in central Oklahoma, but has almost up to a foot here once you get to the corner here of Arkansas, Missouri. Uh, then on the way up from there, some much higher amounts. The American model also kind of shows the same kind of general idea with a lot of snow moving through Oklahoma into the northeast. Uh, the NAM as well, um, blend of the models there, and the Canadian model too. So the Canadian model and the European model, very similar, except it does have quite a bit more snow up here in Missouri. So the take home here is, is you're going to be dumping some snow up here across eastern Kansas, northern half of Missouri, and then onward from there. Uh, I do want to show you, let's see, yeah, let's do this. So remember, um, let's just go ahead and start the timeline here uh, over central Oklahoma and north. By the time we head into 6 a.m. on Tuesday, we already have, uh, excuse me, Wednesday, we already have this light, light, light glazing of ice here. Again, Oklahoma City to Tulsa, Muskogee, so pretty much, pretty much long north of I-40 here in the central Oklahoma and then back up to north and west. And that again is just enough to cause black ice. Now as we head into the midday hours, you can see how it continues to expand slowly. It, remember, freezing drizzle is very light. There's not a lot of lift in the atmosphere to produce it, uh, but it doesn't take much like we talked about. Now down south, as that secondary wave starts to kick in, you're going to get a lot more ice accumulations down here in southeast Oklahoma. Now this model blend is very conservative, and I do mean very conservative, because there's some amounts up here that could exceed well over half an inch of ice here in southeast Oklahoma and northeastern Texas. But this gives you the general idea of the placement and how things should be fairly light here across uh, northern, northeastern Oklahoma and along the I-44 corridor. But once you get too far south, it does start to pick up uh, a little bit more. So as far as power outages go, what the take home from this is, is that most, not all, most of the power outages that, that relate to ice, all right, that relate to the actual weather itself, should be kind of bounded from along the I-40 corridor out here closer to Fort Smith, uh, back down here to maybe to Paul's Valley, Paoli, something like that, uh, and then back down here into, into North Texas. So along this line, I don't uh, north of this line, don't expect numerous powers, maybe sporadic, just a few here and there, um, just be based off the precipitation amounts as it looks today. Uh, but I do expect in this region is where all the trouble is going to be uh, for power problems and conditions. All right, now snowfall amounts we talked about, the uh, blend of models, actually I kind of like it, for the snowfall so we'll just show you that here so it's got about five to six inches of snow here in central oklahoma that extends on up toward tulsa a little bit more there and, and northeast we go and even down to dallas has a little bit of a dusting of snow for you guys about an inch maybe or so and then of course more snow up in kansas uh, surrounding areas uh, but that's a pretty good estimate right now as far as snowfall totals so this really isn't really nothing i've said is 
change much in Saturday other than the icing line for the thick accumulating freezing rain continues to get shoved just a little bit more south as the models detect a little thicker, deeper Arctic air mass than uh, what was originally um, shown in the data last week. All right, so the timing on this, the cold front comes on in. So here's tonight at uh, after midnight, we, we're gonna really drop. So we'll be into the 32 degree line by tomorrow morning. So again, anything at 32 or below is where you deal with freezing precipitation and that will continue to fall with temperatures into the 20s during the day. Uh, as we head into Thursday morning, we're still into the teens. By afternoon, we'll struggle, and I do mean struggle, maybe, we'll hit the low 20s. That's a big maybe for a lot of us. And as we head into Saturday, uh, Friday morning, we're back into the teens, and in the afternoon, we'll struggle again to get in, into the upper 20s. We'll have some wind with this event, so this is wind gusts around 20 to 30 to maybe as much as 40 miles per hour. So any windy during this whole period. <laughs> Come on, Cox. <laughs> Sorry, Cox. Uh, I think they're doing some line work, and I think they just hosed me there for a minute. All right, so there's uh, Thursday wind chill values into the uh, negative numbers. All right, so what we have here is a large area of a winter storm impact, moderate to sometimes major. And with that said, uh, you're going to get these little areas of purple and red. What that means is a big disruption, a danger to life, property, all that kind of stuff. And that's over all the way down to central Texas. So it's a big storm. It affects everybody. Uh, let's see. Well, quickly. Rain here tonight southeast of this little boundary here in green, a mixture of the, we talked about from Oklahoma City northward late tonight, and then of course all snow in northwest. During the day on Wednesday, the highest and mostly ice amounts here in the pink shading. Uh, we do have that mixture of, of uh, freezing rain and sleet here in central Oklahoma for Wednesday. Of course, still snow all the way up north and west. And then Wednesday night, uh, we're looking at a transition. It's just going to be all snow, with the exception, once again, southeast Oklahoma. And then same thing for Thursday, all snow, with the exception of southeast Oklahoma. So it's unfortunately just it's not going to be any better. At least we don't have a huge ice storm as it looks right now for Oklahoma City and Tulsa. That's the best news I have for you. But southeast Oklahoma still looks pretty um, significant for ice down here with anywhere from a quarter as much as a half inch in some areas um, for that area. And, of course, the winter storm warning will continue. Uh, heavier snow amounts here in northeast Oklahoma, especially around the Tulsa area, points north, and then heavier ice amounts around the McAllister area, uh, and then points south into southeast Oklahoma. So that's where your power outages will reside. And as far as the temperatures over the next several days, again, we're going to be cold for obviously Thursday, Friday, and we're going to try to get you above freezing on Saturday, but I don't think it's going to happen. I think we'll stop probably just shy, but then uh, Sunday should be good. From that point, we're going to warm things up quite a bit. Overnight lows, though, will still be fairly chilly. Finally, on my website, AaronTuttleWeather.com, if you go to the Weather Data tab and you hit Oklahoma Road Conditions and also Oklahoma Power Outages, that will give you what you need to know because I do get a lot of those questions. On the Road Conditions, you'll be able to click on any one of these little pictures that will pop up. It'll also show you the road closings, and you can get a zoomed-in view of Oklahoma City Metro, Tulsa, and elsewhere over the state just by manipulating these maps on the site. All right. Whew. There's a lot more I could show you I could, could do, but... <laughs> I'm out of time, so I appreciate you following me. That was a lot. I hope you got it all. I hope it was educational, it was informative. You know how now how to plan around it. I'll be back again live tonight at 9.30 to like, maybe take another look at the latest data and a lot more time to discuss some things, answer some of your questions, which I will do then. I appreciate your time today. Enjoy the rest of your day. Use it to get whatever stuff you need at the... Um, at the grocery stores and to get those generators ready to go if you need them if you're in the area of the ice prone areas which is in southeast oklahoma and um we'll see what tonight's data shows if there's any tweaking involved all right you guys be safe take care talk to you later. bye